For two months now, it has been a race against time to battle an invasion of its kind. Desert locusts in their millions, a scene never witnessed in Kenya in more than 70 years. These unwelcome guests are peculiar in nature, changing face with every passing day. Black, pink, yellow, and with a mobility that evolves as they mature. The responses have been telling of the inexperience of dealing with these pests. From firing in the air, tear gassing them, beating drums, screaming, and, well, this. Today, the first generation has hatched in Kenya, and if not stopped, could develop into a plague with far-reaching consequences for the region. In this special report, Citizen TV joins the foot soldiers tackling this invasion, from those who best understand the science of the swarm, to officials working round the clock to contain the breeding. This is the race to stop an unpredictable ticking time bomb in Eastern Africa. Professor Jack Kabaru works at the University of Nairobi's School of Biological Sciences. He is one of the few Kenyans to have dedicated their time to study the desert locust. About 30% of the Earth's uh, surface, that's land, is prone to locust infestation. And that's a huge area. Kenya happens to fall under that area. So. Um, in the case of the desert locust specifically, it chooses to thrive in an area uh, beginning from the west, from Mauritania, all the way from the, the Sahara, Djibouti, Somalia, and then to Pakistan and northern and, and, and parts of India. Those areas are, in most cases, desert territory. I mean, it's semi-arid or arid, and that's why this insect is called the desert uh, locust. In late 2018, the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations issued a warning that desert locusts would invade the Horn of Africa. Kenya was expected to be severely affected. I was alarmed because they are very accurate in their predictions. They have experience in this area uh, since 1945. That's a long time. So they are usually on the spot. They covered the entire northern frontier districts. Uh, uh, by now we are talking about 20 counties that have experienced locust in one way or the other. Now this was taken in uh, 1993. Professor Kabaru was part of a team that worked to manage the locust invasion of Mauritania in 1993. Kabaru and his colleagues knew that the science of the locust would be paramount to those responding to the invasion. They have been studying the insect here in their labs for more than 20 years. We have different rooms, but the room I'm going to start with, we have the, the locust in here. Uh, it is basically hot. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah because of the type of insect that we have. The temperature in this lab is between 30 to 40 degrees Celsius. Sometimes it can go higher. It is the perfect condition for the desert locust to thrive. Even though it can survive in colder temperatures, its level of activity and mobility would be much lower. For us locusts, it is important for us, for our students, to understand the biology of locusts. Because then when you are focusing on control, you want to understand the morphology, you want to understand the body parts, right. that this is the way its leg is, yeah. this is the way it jumps, this is the way it eats. You want to understand the physiology, right. this is the way it operates. For example, if I deny it water, how would it behave? Dr. George Ongamo, who heads this department, was seconded by the Entomological Society of Kenya to join the locust response team on the ground. Unfortunately, the first swarm that came, which were of immature adults, several other swarms came in. So we are not only talking of a single invasion, there have been several other swarms that have come in. 
but uh, the first home that, were, that came in were immature adults. And that's when now the government decided that there was need to contain them through spraying. But the decision to spray cannot be done unless you see the individuals that you're dealing with. So when they realized that, hey, here we have immature adults, the only way was to suppress them through spraying. If these were two-day-old immatures, that means two days as adults, they would have required about a month or so before mating and laying eggs. Okay? If they did lay eggs, those eggs would take about 10 to 12 days to hatch. The behavior of the desert locusts at the mating stage is perhaps one of the most critical to understand. The female uh, gets the sperm from the, uh, from, the, from the male and she can store some sperm to fertilize eggs within her body. But all the same she can get multiple uh, matings. The female can lay eggs even up to seven times in their lifetime. And the eggs are laid in a batch. That batch is a tube which is called a pod, which contains anywhere between uh, 40 to 70 eggs. Okay? But of course you could vary depending on the size of the female and its size condition. It can be 30 to maybe 60 or so. And out of those, the majority, of, if the conditions are right, most, more than 90% will survive. That is the egg. Oh, it's so deep in the sand. Right? Yes. So the eggs. With alternate uh, rain and uh, sun, that is a very good environment for them. If it was just going to be sunny, uh, that will not support the viability of these eggs. We need a bit of downpour, even if it is once in a while. So they would hatch into the first young stage, Kifaranga. It's called um, a hatchling or first insta. In another 10 days, that small uh, insect, young insect, which is about one centimeter, would hatch, would, would mold, it would shed its skin, you know, just like um, most other animals shed their skins, like we hear snakes shedding their skins. It will get out of its old coat, it would expand and mold into, develop into a second larger hopper. We call them hoppers. And so on, in another 10 days, the third, we, we will get the third hopper. In another 10 days, the fourth hopper. In another 10 days, the fifth hopper, which is much bigger, but cannot fly. All the hoppers cannot fly. And the fifth hopper, in another 10 days, will hatch into a new immature adult. That's the cycle. I can see like a... Oh, one. like that one. A tiny white one right in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that is, so they're that, usually very is tiny. The, like, is it a nymph? And you see, is yeah, you yeah. That is what you call a nymph. They usually go through five instars, five instars, then the nymph stage, because you have the egg, then yes. you start having the instars. Mm. That this stage, yes. there's this one, there's this one, yes. you know, and then there's this one. It is what we call the hoppers. Because at is this particular now point. That we are seeing in Isiolo? Okay, my stage. expectation yes. is that we are seeing hoppers and maybe we are seeing the sexually mature ones, right. which are usually pinkish in color. Mm -hmm. Especially when you see the pinkish in color, it means they are about to turn just mature. It's a fascinating but alarming discovery. The sheer speed and rate at which locusts eat and reproduce could pose a huge risk to the agricultural sector. More than ever now, we wanted to find out just how big a crisis this could be and, most importantly, the stage of the locusts we are currently dealing with. Yes. So we are just showing the map on that Earth Ranger uh, map. Uh, we've mapped the counties and incidences of locusts within those areas. Wow. So you can clearly see there are five incidences of reports in different areas. Here are two, here are two, there's five here. There are areas like now around the Siolo in the central here, which have more, more than 101 reports. Wow, so those are incidences of reports in, within those areas. So this clearly shows us that Isiolo is one of the worst hit yeah, areas. Isiolo, yeah, Isiolo and Samburu, those are the areas worst hit in terms of uh, reports, from clearly reports. We were part of the team. We formed that uh, kind of committee 
regional committee in which uh, Isiolo County, uh, Samburu County, Lakipia County, Meru County were members. So we were sending our aircraft from here, about four aircraft, for surveillance every morning and evening, where they slept, how they were moving, so that then the efforts uh, government is making is we complement that. Uh, apart from areas where there is highway, they are all off offside of the most of the you know national roads, and so, but uh, it can still be accessed by air, and once it is located, you can spray from there. But it takes a lot of long time for you to reach some of these areas by road. Yeah. Our drive into the infested areas takes us through a rough terrain. For three hours, the dusty and rocky hills of this vast county usher us into a sparsely inhabited area called Kipsing. Our drive is suddenly interrupted by this fast band of hoppers crossing the road. They are in their hundreds. Residents here helplessly chasing the hoppers away from their livestock paths. Yes, see. This team from the Kenya Defense Forces has been using vehicle mounted pumps to spray the locusts. Major Ouma, who's leading the operation, has been documenting their daily task. Now you might uh, realize that some of the areas, there are no networks, and therefore maybe the reporting process is slow so for us for us to get the information of where the names or hoppers are it takes some time so by the time we are reaching there they are at an advanced stage but uh, so far so good we've not seen any stage that is almost flying there are thousands if not millions of dead hoppers around me major Oma and his team just sprayed this area one hour ago it is 70 kilometers into the bush from Isiolo town. But when you look at the dead hoppers very closely, you'll notice that the wings are just beginning to come in. This means that, according to what Professor Kabaru and his team told us, this is the fourth insta stage of the hopper. And this means that in the next three to four weeks, these would have become mature adults, ready for mating and laying eggs. Although battle scenes like these are a win for spraying teams, it's a mere reflection of the war that's ahead. Just a few minutes from here, another band of hoppers are in their pilgrimage. They move effortlessly around the rocks, prancing on the sand, climbing up the trees one after the other, in search of food. And when they come across anything green along their way, there is no moving forward until it's completely gone. The aftermath resembles the remnants of a wild bushfire. This band of hoppers would have been an easy target for Major Ouma's team, but a mechanical hitch has grounded their operations for today. These machines need servicing after every two to three days because the, the chemicals are sticky and now we need to flush the whole system of the machine so that it can now offer free flow of the chemicals. Uh, this is a uh, This uh, pesticide is very effective against locusts. You can see these are the two containers. They came yesterday. This one is 250 liters and this one is 250 liters. It's already reconstituted. So we use it the way it is. We put in the vehicle and then it's sprayed. Isiolo's Minister for Agriculture, Dr. Lawrence Mwongela, is leading the response team here. He says the chemicals they're working with are always running out and the men on the ground are too few to handle the vast region. Because we require enough farms, we require chemicals to come in large quantities like now. What you see, I have at the moment, cannot be able to cover the whole counter tango. So the chemicals can be synchronized, uh, the, the youth synchronized, and then we do the work at tango. That way we can be able to manage. But now this piece will, at some stage, if we move like this, they are going to mature, start flying again, and at the end of the day, they, 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 they lay the eggs again. And then you see the cycle may continue a little bit longer. The quantity of the chemicals you require to treat a swarm of locusts. You need tens of thousands of liters. So you want it and it's not there. This is when now you start running around and telling everybody else. We floated tenders even internationally. So we get yes, but then companies tell you, okay, I'll be able to supply, but after four weeks, 
You don't have four weeks with Locas because after four weeks, Locas will have moved from first insta, they're heading to the fifth insta, they are about to, to cause damage. So this is another challenge. FAO has received up to 40 million US dollars to lead the efforts of combating the desert locust in the region. Now, they want to employ a well-timed and coordinated response plan. The government has now divided those areas for purposes of efficiency and to enhance uh, both ground and air operations into six, uh, which we call bases. These have been set up. We are equipping those bases now. Uh, one base is in Lodwa. Uh, this will deal with the areas of Turkana. Around Lake Turkana, if you've seen some swamps there, around quite a lot of them. Uh, and also covering also lower parts of Baringo. There are some swamps that were in El Geo Maraquet. So that area, this base will serve. And any other eventual uh, swamps that may go there because of wind or something like this. And then we have a base in Marsabit. Marsabit is uh, heavily, heavily infested. So that is a dedicated base for Marsabit. As you know, also Marsabit is very vast. It's a, it's a huge uh, area. So we have a base there that uh, will have enough spray planes and surveillance and staff uh, to deal with, uh, with that area. The other base is Isiolo, which was before our only base when we started. But it still remains the base. It's done quite a commendable job. Even with these well laid out plans, there are more complexities that may make the process more difficult. Projections like this one by the IGAD Climate Prediction and Applications Center show that another wave of invasion, possibly of mature locusts, could be headed Kenya's way from Somalia. The locusts in Kenya are said to be headed north into areas like Baringo, Turkana, Uganda and South Sudan. If our neighbors don't do their part, this is one of the challenges you have with a migratory pest. Because it, it has no borders. So it has to be approached as a global issue. It has to be approached as a regional issue. It may take a few weeks or months to deal with the current generation of locusts. If Eastern African countries can work strategically and with speed to eliminate the current breed, the response of this invasion will go down the history books as a successful one. But should the teams waste any more time, the breeding will become uncontrollable and the desert locust could just become one of Kenya's long-standing challenges. Ashamwilu, reporting for Citizen TV.